In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, such a great chapter, of course, on the subject of the resurrection. Near the end of that chapter, the Apostle Paul says in verse 50, beginning of 1 Corinthians 15, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory, O death where is your sting, O Hades? Where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of, the, of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I think we all, especially as we get older, long more and more for that moment, that last trumpet that will sound when this mortal puts on immortality, when this corruptible is finally able to put on an incorruptible body. There always have been those in our world, going back even to the early explorers, I think it was what Ponce de Leon who came in search of the fountain of youth in Florida. There's people always searching for extending their life on this earth, immortality. I saw a story at the end of last week, this past Saturday, and the headline read, Tech Millionaire Pursues Quest for Immortality. He plans to reduce his biological age. Well, that grabbed my attention, so I opened up that article, and it said, Brian Johnson, a 46-year-old tech entrepreneur, is trying to reverse the aging process by spending millions of dollars on a team of experts monitoring and conducting his experiments on his body in order to achieve the body of an 18-year-old, according to a new interview with Time magazine. Time senior correspondent Charlotte Alter described visiting and interviewing the entrepreneur in his California home. The goal is to get his 46-year-old organs to look and act like 18-year-old organs, she reported. According to Johnson, he now has the bones of a 30-year-old and the heart of a 37-year-old. The journalist went on to describe Johnson's restrictive health regimen to reduce his biological age. The system, that system includes downing 111 pills every day. Some of you thought you took a lot of pills. 111 pills every day. Wearing a baseball cap that shoots red light into his scalp. And there's some other details I'm going to leave out. But... He also has in his bedroom, his bed or a laser face shield he uses for collagen growth and wrinkle reduction. And while scientists and medical experts alter quoted voice skepticism about his project and methods, Johnson suggested that he's more interested in the future's opinions rather than his modern contemporaries. He said, quote, I have a relationship with the 21st century more than I have a relationship with the 21st century. I don't really care what people in our time and place think of me. I really care about what the 21st century thinks. The reporter recounted that such procedures have made his dating life difficult, noting he has listed what he calls the 10 reasons why, why women will literally hate me. The reasons include eating dinner at 11.30 a.m., no sunny vacations, bed at 8.30 p.m., no small talk, always sleeping alone, of course. They're, they're not my number one priority. And after questioned whether one can truly re retain their humanity when their lives are so regimented around an extreme health routine, uh, he says, we have a whole bunch of ideas about what it means to exist. We have all these ideas about what is happiness and other things. We're walking in, into a future where we can no longer have control, appearing to refer to AI. These pursuits are arrogant, they're foolish, they're vain when God tells us, here's how to have immortality. When God says that I created you in my own image, 
When God says that your flesh, your dust, and dust you shall return, when the Word of God says that you and I, we all, everyone, including this entrepreneur, Brian Johnson, he may have better health, he may live longer than some, he may not have other diseases, he may, but he's eventually going to die. We all have an appointment with death, and after this, the judgment. And so it's good that anyone out there is thinking about living longer in life after death or immortality, but here's the answers. And Jesus, of course, is the answer for him and for you and me and everyone else. Jesus, of course, declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, John 14, verse 6. And as he declared at the grave of his dear friend Lazarus, I am the resurrection and the life. In John eleven twenty five, 25, he went on to say there in that great and memorable text, He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? He asked Martha. Yes, Lord, I believe. She responded. And so, pursue life everlasting, but it's in Jesus Christ. Pursue immortality, but it's only, again, through Christ. We read in the book of Romans in chapter 2, in verse 4, beginning, Romans 2, verse 4, beginning, Or do you despise the riches of His goodness, God's goodness, forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance, but in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who are rendered each one according to his deeds. Eternal life to those who by patient continuance and doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking, like this man, and do not obey the truth and obey unrighteousness, what awaits them, Paul says, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish on every soul of man who does evil, of the Jew first and also of the Greek. But glory and honor and peace to everyone who works what is good, to the Jew first and also the Greek, for there is no partiality with God. He said that women are not his number one priority. That's okay, but the problem is God's not his number one priority. It's himself, it's, it's doing these extreme measures to try to uh, have the body of an 18-year-old when he's 46 years old, when he needs to be thinking about the brevity of life, the uncertainty of life, and the certainty, though, of judgment to come. There's going to be one day when the Lord will call all who are in the graves to come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation, as we read in John chapter 5 and verses 26 through 29. And so as we extend the Lord's invitation tonight, we hope that you are very much interested in immortality and eternal life. But I think our audience, in fact, I feel fully convinced that those in our audience tonight know that only that immortality and eternal life can be achieved through Jesus Christ and Him alone. There's salvation in no other name than His. And so we invite you to come to Jesus tonight, believe in Him that He is the Christ, the Son of God, Repenting of your sins, confessing your faith in Him, be buried with Him in baptism, have thy sins washed away, and have life that is promised, and the life that is to come, eternal life in Him, the crown of life. If you remain faithful, if you haven't been faithful to Him, there's sin in your life, then humble yourself, confess that, repent of that, turn back to God, and if we can encourage in any way spiritually, let us, let us know, please, as we stand and we sing.